It's Adam here for PC Monitors and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the AOC G2590PX and the OSD on-screen display menu system of that model. The OSD is controlled by a little joystick at the rear of the monitor. To the right side, this little joystick here. There's also a power LED that's front facing at the uh, right side of the bottom bezel and that just glows a gentle white when the monitor's on and glows amber or dark orange when it's on standby or in a low power state. If you press the joystick up you can select the input used by the monitor. If you press the joystick down you can enable the dial point feature which is an on-screen crosshair. If you press it to the left, you can change um, the game mode used by the monitor, which I'll come on to shortly. And if you press the joystick right, nothing happens. So there, there are no features associated with that. If you press the joystick in, you enter the main OSD menu system. This is laid out in AOC's now usual widescreen style, taking up a lot of horizontal screen space. Um, the first section is luminance and that allows you to change the contrast and brightness. You can activate an eco mode um, if, you're in, if you've got the game mode deactivated. Um, I'll just temporarily disable that so I can show you some of the other features. All these do is set the brightness to a certain preset value. So there's text mode, internet, game, movie, and sports. They just change the brightness level, which you can adjust manually if eco mode is set to standard. They also grey out the contrast um, if you've got one of the eco modes active. There are three different gamma modes on the monitor, which you explored in the review. DCR, dynamic contrast ratio, also explored in the review, which is a dynamic contrast mode. Image setup, which is greyed out unless you're using an analog connection, because um, that's all handled and optimized automatically on digital connections. Color setup, which allows you to adjust the color temperature used by the monitor. There are various presets, warm being the default, normal, cool, sRGB, and user, and uh, some of these are explored in the review. User allows you to manually adjust the red, green, and blue color channels. DCB, dynamic color boost mode, this selectively oversaturates certain shades or fully oversaturates shades so you get a reduction in shade variety, things don't look as accurate or natural uh, but they look more saturated which some users may prefer. Full enhance which oversaturates all of the shades, nature skin that oversaturates the sort of reddy tones, green field which does the same to green tones, sky blue which does the same to blue tones makes them oversaturated. Auto detect is supposed to change according to what sort of is displayed on the screen, so what the predominant colour is displayed on the screen. DCB demo just gives you a split screen showing what it looks like with DCB on or off. Um, I mean, I'd recommend just leaving it all off for the most accurate uh, and natural colour presentation on the monitor. Picture boost, this allows you to control the bright frame settings of the monitor. So that just puts a little sort of box on the screen. I'm not going to show you this because I'd have to adjust the camera and it's uh, it's not a particularly exciting thing to show you really. Um, but basically you can put a little box on the screen and then you can independently control the digital brightness and contrast. It doesn't control the actual brightness as you do on the luminance menu um, because that controls the entire backlight of the screen at the same time. So you can't just have one little box having a different backlight brightness but it is a digital brightness control so you can adjust sort of how that area of the screen is presented versus the rest of the screen. OSD setup allows you to control things such as the language the OSD is displayed in, the timeout period so how long after the last button press um, before the OSD automatically disappears from the screen. DP capability, and that's just a compatibility thing. Just leave that at 
for most users that will allow you to activate free sync and use the full capabilities of the monitor um, if you're using DisplayPort. 1.1 is just there if you've got an older system that doesn't support 1.2. Um, you can change the horizontal and vertical position of the OSD on the screen. You can adjust the volume of the integrated speakers or anything connected to the 3.5mm jack. You can change the transparency, the transparency level of the OSD. And there's a break reminder feature and what that does is just puts a little message on the screen after you've been using the computer uh, or have the monitor switched on for an hour which reminds you to take a break. Game setting next, and this allows you to adjust the game mode of the monitor. These are explored in the review, or some of these are explored in the review. I don't really like the preset ones. Um, you actually lose a lot of functionality if you have a game mode active. So you can see actually now on this mode, uh, race mode or racing mode, I can't control any of the luminance menu. It's all greyed out. Um, and it's set to 100 brightness which is very bright and you can't adjust that. You also lose access to the colour setup menu so you can't change the colour values either. But I do quite like the Gamer 1, Gamer 2 and Gamer 3 mode. I wouldn't usually like these um, because again they restrict what you can set. You still have the colour setup greyed out although you can adjust the luminance menu. But as I explored in the review, they have a positive impact on the pixel responsiveness of the monitor. So that's why I actually do use these game modes. You can change shadow control. Um, and this is a bit like ben BenQ's black equaliser. Um, but it has quite an extreme effect, even with very slight um, adjustments. So in that respect, it's not actually very well implemented. There is... If I open the Legom website, you'll be able to see the effects. If you increase shadow control, everything actually just becomes completely flooded. Yes, the visibility improves, but uh, the dark shades are completely lost and things just look flooded and bad. Um, and you can increase it even further and things just become a complete washed out mess. 50, the default looks fine. Um, you're not going to be able to see exactly what I see on the video, it's going to look a bit different, but you can see the, the general sort of trends of what happens with the shades. And if you reduce that at all, which is 40, because you can only decrease or increase it in increments of 10, um, basically the visibility of the shades is really poor. Uh, for uh, I mean, I don't know how this will look on the video, but I can actually only see the last four boxes on the Legom website, which is... Uh, not good at all and that's just at 40 you can decrease that further so in my opinion it's a fairly useless feature the way it's implemented um, but never mind it is what it is low input lag um, and that is uh, I haven't really done a lot of testing of, of this um, I don't notice any issues with it on however so I just leave it on on my Nvidia system if you're connected to an, N uh, an AMD graphics card and you've got FreeSync active um, or enabled, it's supported by the GPU, that will be greyed out. But in my testing, the input lag is very low anyway. Um, and it seems as if that's just forced on if you've got AMD FreeSync being used anyway, so don't worry about that. If you can select it, just leave it on. There's game colour. And this is um, a bit like the digital vibrance control that you get in NVIDIA um, control panel and you can again oversaturate colors you can see the shade range decreasing massively um, again this won't be presented properly in the video but you'll still see the general trends basically all of these sort of brighter more saturated shades all blend together and that's because shades are being pulled towards the edge of the color gamut um, without the colour gamut itself being expanded. So you do lose shade variety, but some people prefer a more saturated look, and that's what this control allows you to achieve. Or you can decrease it and get a less saturated look, or have it completely monochrome if you'd like. Low blue mode, that are the low, uh, the, uh, low blue light settings of the monitor. And they're explored in the review as well. So there's off, weak, medium, or strong, they work quite nicely. Overdrive, again explored in the review, off, weak, medium, strong, so that's the greater grey acceleration, 
of the monitor, the response time settings if you prefer, the dial point feature which I've already gone through. Uh, finally there is extra and this allows you to change the input used by the monitor. Um, auto configs just something that um, applies to analog connections not digital connections. Off timer and that allows you to set the screen to automatically turn off after a set number of time in hours, set amount of time in hours, um, between 1 and 24 hours, or you can have that set to zero, which is disabled, and that'll actually give you a little message on the screen, um, and if you don't want the monitor to turn off, even though you've got the off-timer feature enabled, you just have to press one of the buttons, uh, twiddle the joystick, and it'll just stay on instead. Image ratio, um, that applies to some non-native resolutions or uh, possibly certain uh, inputs, only HDMI perhaps. Um, I think it, it only has auto and wide settings if I recall correctly anyway. So it's uh, not something that applies to most users. DDC slash CI, to use software to control the monitor. AOC has their own software for this, for example. Um, I don't find it particularly good, and I don't use it. I prefer to just use the physical OSD, no matter what the monitor is. But some people do prefer to use the software, and that is an option. So just leave that set to yes, if you want to use the software. And if you don't, it doesn't actually hurt to have it set to yes. There's an option there to reset everything to the factory defaults. And finally, there's a little bit of information on the resolution and the, um, the refresh rate, the frequency used by the monitor. So it's a 144Hz monitor. If you've got FreeSync active, it'll just display FreeSync there. It doesn't actually show you what f refresh rate the monitor is currently running at. Um, it'll just say FreeSync, and it actually just says FreeSync if you're connected to a FreeSync compatible GPU and FreeSync is enabled in the driver. So it doesn't give you any indication if it's actively using FreeSync or not. So there you have it, that was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the AOC G2590PX. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that and information about how you can support our work in the description of the YouTube video.